So uh, I know I said I was going to do a response, a second response to uh, your video about memes, but uh, I stumbled onto this one, and uh, well, basically I'd rather talk about consciousness than than memes. So, um, but you know, it's probably all relevant, no guarantees, but it, it might turn out to be. Um, so the hard problem of consciousness, then it seems to think it's sort of a false problem, and it's even um, a problem which, when you perpetuate it as a meme into um, the cultural exchange of philosophers and intellectuals, you're really just creating this false belief in the idea that Elan Vital is something that needs an explanation, that there is a mental substance or a soul or a spirit beyond the body that guides the body somehow. Um, but I, I don't think that's a fair way of, of framing this problem that uh, Chalmers has done a pretty good job of at least outlining for us or pointing out that, okay, there is a mental side to things, an inside, and there is a material side, an outside. And um, he's not necessarily an ontological dualist, but he is an epistemological one. Uh, he says, we don't know how these two things relate today. In other words, he's not like Dennett, who's willing to just reduce it completely, mind, reduce it completely to uh, material interactions, uh, the motion of matter through space. Um, whereas, whereas Chalmers is saying, we can't make that assumption. Um, we don't have enough knowledge to say that. In fact, I think Chalmers says we have knowledge which, which contradicts that. Um, but he does reject the, uh, the title of a dualist, though I think it's ontological dualism he's rejecting, not epistemological dualism. Um, he's perfectly willing to admit that we may one day know enough to say that mind is matter, but now, right now, with our current understanding, we don't. Uh, and, you know, I think... The way Chalmers is outlined, it still puts us into this state of mind where we're expecting the answer to be in terms of what consciousness is, as though it were a substance of some kind. We're asking what is consciousness, what is experience, as though it were a thing, a being. But maybe thinking of consciousness in spatial terms, as we usually think of matter, is, is the confusion here. Um, maybe consciousness can only be understood as a temporal dimension. Um, and the temporal dimension is not extended like space. It's not geometrical. Um, you cannot quantify it. There's no calculus of time because uh, time is recursive, it's circular. It, it goes nowhere, it has no beginning and, and no ending. But within it, there are many changes, many distinctions that arise and pass away. And the vitalism of life, the thing that makes that word have a meaning at all, is the fact that organisms move through time and they experience their motion through time and any experience of motion through time by an organism is necessarily purposeful we can talk of matter as not being purposeful as moving as just pure locomotion instead of telemotion but when matter has become an organism which can only be by continually becoming it's no longer lacking purpose and direction and experience so when we understand that uh, consciousness isn't a substance that it's actually a feature of the passage of time maybe we should also consider what we might mean by space and matter and energy uh, again because 
are we right to separate space and time, life and non-life, biology and physics? Can there be a separation? I mean, for the physical sciences, the law of thermodynamics says that entropy rules. Things tend to decay, to fall into greater states of disorder. But the law of life is exactly the opposite. And yet, somehow, these two things can't possibly contradict in reality. They certainly do in, in our ideality, in our you know, cultural projections onto these two falsely dichotomized areas of our experience. But in reality, physics leads to biology, because here we are. And biology leads to mind, to language, to culture, because we are sharing ideas. So, is there a hard problem? There's a problem. The problem is we can't understand consciousness as a substance, because it's, it's not uh, a substance, it's, it's a process. And once we've, we've made this, this step away from seeing consciousness as a substance, we then have to reevaluate how we understand matter. Because what is matter without process? What is substance without form? And is there ever such a thing? I mean, is there a stuff that the world is made of? Or is it just patterns all the way down and then all the way out? Um, so consciousness is a problem, but it's just as soft as it is hard. I mean, we shouldn't necessarily expect an intellectual, logical, and strictly rational answer to this type of question. You know, as I said at the beginning, there's, there's not really an answer if we, if we frame this question in terms of what consciousness is. It isn't a being, it's a process of becoming. So searching for an isness or essence of it is kind of like um, searching for darkness with a flashlight, as uh, William Owen Thompson has said. Uh, so um, we can talk about memes again too, but I, uh, I'm glad I find your channel because uh, there's a lot of other cool titles on some of your videos that I'm going to have to check out now too, so uh, let me know what you think. And uh, take it easy.